It's been one of those days. What you're seeing is a brand new Leopard 45 or B3's Yanmar diesel engine flying through the air. You might call this absurd, and it is. But what's more absurd is how this entire story started and how long it took to resolve. This is an SD60 sail drive, almost new and hardly used. It used to be close friends with the 4JH45 engine that it was attached to. It also flew through the air and disappeared into the back of a truck. Hmm, this takes us back to here. This is the sea trial of the yacht we call Liger. A lot happened that day, one event of which damaged the sail drive gears. But I guess even this isn't far enough back to explain the multi-month long fiasco of arse covering and blame ping pong. This story isn't even fully explained by the 27 litres of salt water that came out from between the engine mount module and bottom of the hull around the sail drive joint, which was so full that it always made sure there was a little water sloshing around in the engine bay. Good thing that in Cape Town, large corporations are loved so dearly that a little investigation can basically get you information from anyone about anything. Maybe it began here, with a leak in the engine bay from the engine installation. No, actually it didn't. The process of how this occurred was explained to the boys in detail. So we're going to cut to Tynan to show you exactly how this ridiculous issue occurred on our Leopard 45 based on the information they were told by other Robertson and Kane employees who they like and won't name. These holes are pre-drilled as part of the construction process to allow large screws to be inserted to hold parts of the boat together as the adhesive cures. As you can see, the exhaust mixer hose is underneath. I repurposed some holes to install cable tie cradles. So when they've drilled all these holes, they've drilled holes in the mixer hose. So then when handover and test sale comes, um, there's just seawater just dripping down onto the electrics. And then as engine RPM increases and there's more water in the exhaust mixer hose and more pressure, it turns into a, like a more high pressure leak. So then it starts shooting up hitting the roof and then spraying down onto the, the block. Two days after handover, the Yanmar dealer that works with Robertson and Kane came to investigate. Where's it come down from? No, because that's water running onto electrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's a hole in the top of the pipe. Yeah. So the unit's full of salt water, and that's all full of salt water, and it's been running down on there for ages. Running down, running down. Yeah. So then now you're getting your salt over here, is as the engine room heats up, the yeah. water starts to rise, yeah. condensation, yeah. and then it falls wherever, so you can see you've got so like that shit. a spot there, see, there. See in the alt, around the alternator. Over there as well on the top, yeah. down here, engine mounts. When, when you actually run it at high revs, at two, when he was running it at like 2,500 RPM, and this was orientated, it was squirting down and hitting this and going straight down. That's where all that water on yeah, the... Yeah, I know. You see the sail it, drive? You can see it on the plastic there. No, but down there, look, on, look to your right, on the top of the sail drive. It was just running onto it. Like, look at this. Mm, on the back of the plug. Yeah, like it's... But these electronics have all got cut salt on them. Mm. Like it's... Yeah, everything in the room will need to be washed down. Well, not the sterling power unit, it's already been washed down. <laughs> I'm just gonna fuck up this. <laughs> Shut this with you in here. The engine had 11 hours on it after handover. Engine hours can accumulate if you leave the interface on, but Trent and Titan checked many other new hulls while in V&A Marina, and they had a similar number of hours on them, indicating that it's not a case of being accidentally left on. 11.4. So water had been falling on the engine for approximately 11 hours. But the boat had been launched well before handover and sat there without the issue being addressed while the engine and components in the engine bay severely rusted. As a comparison, here's the starboard engine after almost two years. One of the biggest issues was the rusted injector threads. 
the mechanic sent by Leopard determined that it was impossible to remove all of the rusted components and clean them effectively without pulling the engine. The original random engine installation check which we've been informed is just a random check that our hull happened to be selected for, showed that the engine mount was not aligned and there was liquid in the engine bay which they've called coolant. These issues were supposed to be rectified and a follow-up check completed, but this was never done. The engine mounts remained misaligned until the new one was installed due to the rust. The liquids were not investigated and the Yanmar technician told Trent that the only way they can confirm what the liquid is is to taste it and that they do not taste it in the factory and a follow-up report was not done when it was meant to be. Before you buy a Robertson and Kane Hull, consider whether or not you feel like having to become an investigative journalist or a private investigator. Instead of spending time on his new boat, Trent ended up having to travel around Cape Town, speaking to RNC staff, Yamaha representatives, other boat builders and marine industry insiders, trying to verify the excuses being offered and seeking the truth. It was extremely stressful and absolutely not what a new owner should be subjected to by the manufacturer of their vessel. Aside from being able to disprove some of the pathetic excuses for what happened, why and why it was okay to let salt water run on a new engine, he discovered something that should concern any potential buyer. The boys were verbally told that this issue has been present other hulls. So we're apparently not the first. To fix the issue, Robertson and Kane and the Yamaha representatives wanted to just clean the outside of the engine before adding that they could replace certain components. I haven't gotten down in there and fully analysed the engine to see what my biggest concerns are with you rebuilding it. That'll happen next I'm not if that's the rebuild. Rebuild. <laughs> No. Well, whatever you're going to do, repaint it. No, 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 we'll, we'll wipe it down yeah. with a rag. That's what we're going to Clean do. Clean it up. How do you get rid of the rust? You just wipe it. If I bought, if, if anyone bought a boat and saved up as hard as I have for this boat, yes. and you gave them an engine that's had salt squirting on the front of it, yes. which we've got extensive video of, yes. and then said, here's your new boat, I, I've thought a lot about this and I didn't want to be unreasonable and I, I just think it's crap. I think it's crap to send someone away with a new boat that costs this much money with an engine like that. You yeah. buy a Ferrari and they give you a rusted engine, what would you say? That's all it's about. Well, it's about right and wrong. and We'll, we'll get it to, to the way you, yeah. you want it. Yes. Absolutely. In the end, a friend helped Trent contact people in Yanmar International's head office who directed him to the Yanmar new engine warranty. Let's take a look at what it says, shall we? Hmm. Interestingly, they won't cover any Yanmar marine product, accessory or part that has been subject to water intrusion from the exhaust system, meaning our new 4JH45 engine had no manufacturer's warranty. This was raised and Robertson and Kane suddenly decided to replace the motor. Not because of the lack of warranty due to their staff drilling holes in the exhaust mixer hose, it was because they were nice. Here's what the inside of our motor looked like within weeks of the handover test sale. I know what some of you are thinking. This is definitely cool and normal. Just over three weeks later, the new motor arrived. Did you think that this was it? That it's the end of the story? All I can say is strap yourself in and listen to this next part. During the test sale, we noticed a significant amount of water in the engine base sloshing around. Thomas was getting increasingly frustrated with the, with the quantity of water, the bilge pumps coming on and off and the alarms. Trent was standing directly behind Thomas in the helm with the view of the Yanmar interface while I was down the back near the engine bay. Trent said Thomas was doing about 3,000 RPM forward, then immediately, with no pause, went straight through neutral into about 2,500 RPM in reverse. There was a large metallic bang that everybody aboard heard, myself, Trent and Marcel from Leopard. When the sail drive was checked, there were metallic shards throughout the gear oil and visible chips missing off the leading edge of gears. This was confirmed by Ruan, the Yamaha representative, and it immediately voided the Yamaha warranty, especially given the circumstances with how it happened. The sail drive was deemed to be irreparably damaged and so a new one needed to be installed. The engine was replaced, 
the sail drive was replaced. And even then, it still wasn't the end of this story. We asked a question about, like, because obviously the whole interior here was cleaned because it had, there was salt crystals everywhere. Um, and we asked if there's anywhere where salt water can get in um, and sit that would cause the new, mo new motor to rust. We were sure that it was all cleaned properly and it was all perfect. After the engine was replaced and we were sitting in the V&A Marina, we noticed that water continued to accumulate and fill the recess in the module that the build pump and float switch sit in. We also noticed significant humidity in the port engine bay and a tiny amount of premature rust was appearing on the new engine. We were remounting the batteries as some of the holes were stripped and during that process made an access hole underneath the battery module mount that was approved by Leopard, giving us access below the module that the engine is mounted to. We discovered approximately 27 litres of salt water in the gap between the outer hull of the boat and the engine module. Salt water coming down from the hole in the exhaust mixer hose had drained through holes in the module, slowly filling the void. This means at least 27 litres of salt water was in the engine bay from the leak in the exhaust mixer hose. The leak being able to fill up such a large space to the point where it was coming back out of the build recess further supports the assumption that the 11 hours on the original engine was not simply a case of the interface being left on. Some may question the reasons we've chosen to post this video when ultimately our issue was fixed. While we tried to have a little fun with the editing, that doesn't take away from the seriousness of what happened and it's another thing that occurred on our boat where there's the potential for something good to come out of us sharing our experience. You may ask if Robertson and Kane already knew the cause of the holes in the exhaust mixer hose, why not just admit it and replace things from the start? Why was there such a protracted discussion between them, Leopard and Seascape Marine who are the Yanmar dealer? The boys discovered that someone had to absorb the cost of the damaged engine due to the business relationships and the way the warranty process is structured. Immediately blaming a bad batch of Vetus hoses absolves both Robertson and Kane and Seascape Marine, who do business together in Cape Town. But the response came too quickly with very little assessment, which Trent said raised a red flag. Trent asked that all of the rust on the engine be removed any electronics damaged by the salt water were replaced and the engine bay was restored to new condition. He discovered after translating a long conversation in Afrikaans that was caught on video between the Seascape technician who was assessing the motor and his boss that it was untenable for them to remove, clean and replace all of the rusty components and that the motor would have to be pulled for them to be able to safely and completely rectify. Due to many other factors and some time constraints, this increased the pressure for them to just replace the whole block. Even after all of Seascape and Robertson and Kane's efforts, we are still discovering repercussions of the extensive salt water that was sprayed throughout the engine bay. This illustrates the severity of salt water ingress into electrical components. And as we intend to remote area crews, this was a very serious and stressful situation to resolve as it had direct safety implications. We will never know how many boats this issue affected before ours. They did fix our issue and Ruan from Seascape in particular is an excellent mechanic. But if this does happen to future owners, they can immediately reference this video and have the issue rectified expediently. Trent did want to post this video much earlier than now to help people, but it needed to be put together in the right way in a constructive way without needing to include inflammatory videos of people that didn't really need to be included to make the point. If what the boys were told is correct, it also serves to give information to past owners who may not know the cause or repercussions of having salt water sprayed on their motor, in particular the implications to the warranty. So that is the story of how our SD60 sail drive and Yamaha 4JH45 engine in our brand new yacht were irreparably damaged and then replaced within the first few months of ownership.